Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome you to our stream. I'm here to tell you guys a story and give my commentary. I need for my people in Florida to come to the front of the building. If you guys are from Florida or got any people around that area, or if you're from the Gainesville area, I need you guys to come to the front of the congregation. And I need y'all to take this L. Florida is taking yet another L. And I'm going to tell you guys, this one is bad. And it's a narrative that we keep talking about. What do y'all think it's about? What's our hashtag? What is our most common hashtag that we use here for the people who are familiar? We use a lot of hashtags like, you know, hashtag babies lives matter, hashtag TTO. You know, we got a lot of different hashtags that we use. Hashtag when you date thugs, you date death. Hashtag mom's boyfriend. And yes, we're going to talk about this. And I know that the people in that area are grieving right now. And I am not trying to be insensitive. So I'm going to say some things that are not going to sit well with your sensibilities. But I have to be honest and I have to give my commentary based on what I know. Okay. Now there is an individual that you guys can't see on my screen because I have not put him on my screen yet. So that's a little bit of a brain fart on my part. It's quite all right. Let's go ahead and get him up here. Not him, not her. Let's see. This individual that you guys are looking at, his name is Kiwi Jaquise Ellis. Kiwi, his name is spelled K-I-V-I. That is a very unique name, which can only be by way of a black person given a name like that, Kiwi. I don't know of any other person by that name besides maybe another black person. But nonetheless, Kiwi has been arrested and I want you guys to hear what he was arrested for. A 26 year old man has been arrested and charged in connection with the Northeast Gainesville, Florida shooting that left a mother and her infant son dead on Friday afternoon an incident law enforcement describes as particularly harrowing. Kiwi Jaquis Ellis, Kiwi, K-I-V-I, -I, that's not Kiwi, Kiwi, whatever his name is, it don't matter. It's a stupid name, okay? He was taken into custody after police say that he was found armed on the 2900 block of Northeast 17th Drive following several calls to 911 of shots fired. A woman and her three-month-old baby boy were found on the property, both of them with multiple gunshot wounds. Does anybody want to take a shot in the dark, no pun intended, on how many of these mom's boyfriend stories that we've done all year long, just in 2020? Does anybody want to take a random guess? Because I've lost count, honestly. When we're doing four stories a night and every night that we go live, we're talking about stuff like this. I honestly cannot keep track. An arrest report says that Ellis was actually seen. He was seen firing gunshots at the woman. And I'm pretty sure that's gotta be a scary thing. He was seen firing gunshots at the woman, his girlfriend, as she held their baby in the front yard. And I know that there are people that know me personally that wonder sometimes, am I a little bit too hard on black people when I say hashtag when you date thugs, you date death? Because I'm not saying that all black men in these stories are thugs, but I do call thugs thugs, whether they're Mexican, white, black, whatever they are. But when y'all hear about this fool's criminal history and how he gunned his mother down, I think y'all would agree that he fits the narrative of a thug of a nigga that ain't shit, okay? Let's just be honest about it. Kiwi Jaquise Ellis is a nobody. He is nothing. He is not human. He shot his own girlfriend. So the mother that is involved in this story was his girlfriend and he shot her while she was holding a child. Now y'all tell me that's not some heartless stuff. Could y'all imagine that? Like. What are you going through that will cause you to do something like that? 
And when y'all see those babies, when they come across the screen, man, it should really, really open your eyes. He shot them while they, she held the baby in the front yard and the woman fell to the ground as that man continued to shoot her as she fell to the ground. What a pussy. Wow. She fell to the ground and he came over top of her and continued to shoot her. Police said that Ellis then picked up the baby who was shot in the head and put his body in the back in the backyard near a dog kennel. Jesus Christ. When officers arrived, Ellis was seen walking down the street and firing shots at his neighbor. And I'm going to tell y'all this because y'all haven't seen the video yet. His neighbor was a black man. He started shooting at his neighbor, which was a black man who's lived in that neighborhood for a very long time. Started firing shots at him, but he actually escaped unhurt. Now, Ellis immediately dropped his gun and was taken in to GPD headquarters for questioning. Now, multiple shell casings were found on the property. The arrest report said, hashtag not my words. A five-year-old and a three-year-old child, both related to the mother, were found hiding in the home underneath the bed. Two other kids were there they were found underneath the bed because they were hiding because they were scared. GPD officials say they were placed in their grandmother's care after the incident. Now, during the interviews, Ellis said that, that he made several erratic statements or the police say that he made several erratic statements. The report said that he repeatedly told law enforcement that he was sorry. Oh, he's sorry. Like that's gotta make a difference. And he also asked to call the woman's parents so that he could apologize to them. He also stated that he killed, he killed them both according to the police. He was taken to the Alucha County Jail and charged with two counts of homicide and one count of attempted homicide. The reports note that Ellis was charged with aggravated battery against the same woman in 2014. Let me repeat that because I want y'all to remember that this mother was dealing with this man at least for the past six years, at least known him for six years. He was charged with aggravated battery against the same mother, the same woman in 2014, six years ago, where she required medical attention for a torn liver, fractured ribs, and swelling and bruising to her face, arms, and torso. Ladies, guys, do y'all want to tell me what y'all think about that? What do y'all think about that? Do y'all think that it was a wise decision for her to go back and continue to deal with this man and probably make kids by him? I don't know if those are his kids or not. This man already beat the brakes off of this woman and she went back to him and stayed with him. And I don't wanna hear nobody talking about how it's a battered mindset. At some point, I wanna give women credit and I wanna give a shout out to all the awesome women that are out there because y'all see in my chat, we got a lot of women out there. If y'all wanna raise your hand and let us know who you are, represent yourselves. We got some awesome women out there that understand that the first and only time that a man puts his hands on you he should never get another opportunity to do so. Hello, ladies. Are y'all hearing me? If you even think that a man is going to put his hands on you, you shouldn't be with him, let alone if he actually does it. That should be the first and only time, and that man should either be in one or two places, either six feet deep or in a jail somewhere. But you damn sure shouldn't be getting back in a relationship with that individual, let alone making kids by that man. For my ladies that are stuck kind of in between, we also have information for you. Let me give a shout out to Miss June Bennett. The National Domestic Violence Hotline is available. 
24 hours a day, seven days a week for ladies who ain't figured it out yet. You can call and get help at 800-799-7233 or thehotline.org. The, T-H-E, thehotline.org. Now, let me make sure that I got all my information correct. So, J Kiwi Jaquise Ellis is 26 years old. Okay, let's talk about this because I called him a thug and here's why I called him a thug. Do y'all want to hear his criminal record? Let me take a drink real quick. Mm. Do y'all want to hear this man's criminal record? Because it's actually a little bit more extensive than what I told you. Are y'all ready for this? Here we go. Ellis, that guy, was previously arrested in 2014 for aggravated battery, dating violence against the mother, who was a, a female adult victim. During that incident, she sustained several injuries, including a lacerated liver, fractured ribs, several bruises, lacerations, and swelling to the face, arms, legs, and torso. Ellis pleaded no low contender, which is no contest. Don't ask me how I know that. I didn't been to court a few times, but you're just basically agreeing to not contest what they're going to charge you with. You're leaving yourself at the mercy of the court. Adjudication was held, was withheld, and Ellis agreed to a year of community control and four years of probation in June of 2015. He beat the absolute dog shit out of that woman and got probation, community service. Wow. But wait, guys, it gets worse. Are y'all want to y'all want to hear some more? In October of 2015, his probation officer reported that he had violated the conditions of community control by leaving his residence without permission and Ellis was arrested again and held without bond. He entered into another plea agreement for 91 days of jail time with credit for 30 days time served and a reinstatement of the terms of his previous plea agreement. In December of 2016, his probation officer reported that he had violated a condition of his probation by using or possessing alcohol or narcotics. He again entered into a plea agreement to undergo evaluation for substance abuse and reinstate the conditions of the previous agreement. Two days after the agreement was finalized, his probation officer again reported that he had violated his probation by using or possessing alcohol or narcotics. The violation was dismissed, but Ellis was ordered to enter a inpatient drug treatment facility. In February of 2018, a drug... Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Do y'all get the picture yet? Am I... Like Picasso, I'm painting a picture right now on my canvas. Do y'all see why I'm painting this man as a thug and as a criminal and as a dude who ain't shit? Do y'all understand where I'm coming from? Don't forget to click that like if you guys understand why I'm saying what I'm saying. One more. In February of 2018, a drug test showed that Ellis had used marijuana and cocaine. He was again ordered into a treatment facility. He successfully completed the program in March of 2019. Ellis requested early release from probation in April of 2019 but the request was denied and his probation ended July of this year. A little bit of a criminal history, but all I'm saying is it doesn't seem like this person makes very sound decisions, let alone that this woman got beat the hell up and she chose to stay with that man. We're gonna talk about her and we're also gonna talk about her GoFundMe as well as what the community leaders and people have to say. Let me go ahead and give you guys the fair usage. Let's listen up.
Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Yep. So, yeah, he definitely sh he has been given too many chances, and I definitely think there should be harsher penalties. But here we go. Let's talk about this. In Gainesville, after a mother and baby were shot and killed, Kivi Willis has been charged with two counts of homicide. According to police, when they arrived on the scene, they found Ellis holding a gun. Officers also discovered two other children, ages three and five, hiding underneath a bed inside the home. are concerned as information unfolds in a deadly double homicide investigation. TV20's Camille Syed tells us how neighbors are reacting after witnessing this tragedy. The Gainesville Police Department is investigating a shooting of a woman and her not even one-year-old baby. Neighbors say the incident has left them very worried. In my bedroom, I heard her screaming. Freddie Edwards lives directly across from the crime scene on Northeast 17th Drive and watched the shooting unfold. He says the suspect, 26-year-old Kiwi J. Ellis, fired shots in his direction as well. And then at that time, he went back in the side of my house and then he uh, shot twice. And then that's by the time uh, I was on the phone with GPD, who was en route at the time. Police say Ellis shot the woman and three-month-old child several times. They were pronounced dead at the scene. The infant even suffered gunshot wounds to the head. Well, right now, I'm, I'm worried. My family's kind of worried. Uh, then people begin to talk because this has always been a quiet neighborhood until this incident. After Ellis was detained, police found two children hiding in the home. They are now in their grandparents' custody. I just feel sorry for the family. And his heart goes out to both parties. Uh, our prayers is with the family uh, the, on both sides. Police say Ellis surrendered on site. His bond is set at $1 million. Although the suspect is in custody, police say the investigation could be ongoing for quite some time. More than 100 people visited P.K. Young's softball field to pay their last respects to Shelby Mathis, who was shot and killed with her three-month-old son in Gainesville on Friday. CBS 4's Landon Harris shows us what message her family needs to say to be taken away from her death. The vigil took place on P.K. Young's softball field because it was one of Shelby's favorite places to be when she was in high school. Shelby Mathis loves to play softball better than anybody I've ever seen. She's pretty dang good at it. I mean, to be on a ball field for the last time to talk to her is fitting. Organizers set up multiple ways to let a grieving community remember a woman known for her smile. They showed pictures and had a balloon release. Shelby loved hard. She loved everybody. And from what we get to see tonight, she was loved just as much. And I The only thing I have an issue with here is they shouldn't have released balloons. They already had candles. Why do you have candles and balloons? I think they should have just stuck with the candles. Again, all they're doing is just littering our, our communities. That's it. Stop releasing balloons. You're just trashing up the areas. I think that helps us Absolutely. to know how much she was loved. Through this tragedy, Shelby's family say there is one major message they want her story to be able to get across. If it's illegal for you to throw trash on the ground and just throw it anywhere and every, everywhere, why are we allowed to just let balloons go in the air, people film it, and then that's, we think that's okay? Because it's eventually going to come down and it's going to trash something else. It's going to fall into people's lakes and, 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 and water supply and, and just all kind of stuff. Power lines. Just all kind of stuff, man. Cross to anyone who finds themselves in an abusive situation. Even if you don't feel like you're in danger, but you're in an abusive situation, get out just find there's so much help out there there's so many people that can help you just get out please we we're living in such a horror nightmare right now that we can't stand the thought of another family having to go through this shelby's two surviving children were uninjured in the attack and are staying with their grandparents a gofundme account raising money for the two children has reached more than I got to say that because that is funny. Relationship rehab. Shout out to my brother. Said, don't the balloons go up to heaven? 
I'm assuming that's what people really must think. They just have this hum, hum. They must have this freaking chi or something inside of them that's telling them that these balloons are gonna be doing something so freaking awesome. I, I, anyway, but yeah, shout out to you, bro. Appreciate you. $30,000 since the shooting. Landon Hera, CBS, for you. Jay O'Brien is asking doctors tonight and former patients. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Brianda Villegas. A North Central Florida community is rallying behind the family who lost a mother and her infant in a shooting. Shelby Mathis and her three-month-old son, Gideon, died after being shot in Northeast Gainesville Friday night. A GoFundMe page is being set up by family friends to help cover funeral costs. Funds will also help Mathis two surviving children during the holidays. If you would like to donate, we do have the link to the GoFundMe on our website, wcjb.com. And speaking of that GoFundMe, while I give you guys my closing thoughts, there's the GoFundMe, but let me make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. So if you want to contribute to this GoFundMe, because y'all know that they did not have life insurance, and there's going to always be an excuse for why individuals in America don't have life insurance. It's because it is, it's because it is, it's because it is. All I'm saying is I'm not trying to hurt people's feelings, but what I am saying is that if we are born, at some point we're gonna die. The only difference is that we don't know how we're gonna go, but everybody's gonna go. So why would we leave that burden on our children, on our family and friends? Why not, why do I sound like a commercial right now? Why don't we get life insurance, seriously? For children, it's very cheap. If you can't afford life insurance for your children, then you cannot afford to be a parent. Cause guess what? Children cost money. You got to have money to have kids. And if you can't have your kids protected, then I think there's something wrong with you. Okay. Now, with regard to the mom, I'm assuming that she didn't have life insurance either. But for the, for the life of me, I can't understand why people don't have life insurance. But nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this GoFundMe. Since the world thinks that this is the new life insurance that you don't have to pay for anymore. They were asking for $35,000 and they've collected 31,148 so far. So I'm going to assume that they're going to get what they're asking for, their asking goal. But I gotta tell you this, outside of me being harsh and giving my harsh opinion about that, this mother did not deserve what she got. I know to the family and friends, it might sound like I'm trying to say, well, she got what she got. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying, is that when you realize that a person is not a worthy candidate of your womb, of your bedroom, being around your family and procreating with, the moment that she had to realize that, because those kids don't look like they're any more than about four or five years old. And you're talking about she's been dealing with this man since what? 20, what, 14, 2015? 2014, six years. Don't tell me in six years that you did not know that this man was not a good candidate. To not only for you to be around, because he beat the shit out of you, but then later on, that evil inside of this dude manifested itself and it ended up coming back to bite you. It's kind of like when you go to the zoo and you say, oh, that, that tiger is a really cute tiger right there. I think I kind of want to take that, that cute, beautiful little, you know, dangerous ass exotic tiger home. And I want to see if I can tame this thing. And yeah, you tame the tiger for a little while until <laughs> that thug tiger decides to act on, on what it actually is on the inside, which is a wild beast. And then that, that wild tiger, that wild lion decides to maul your damn face off and maul your kid. But we don't think that the tiger or the lion is the problem. We have to stop putting ourselves in dangerous situations. If we know that there is a large cliff and we continue to keep walking, that we're gonna fall over the ledge, that I would just say, don't even be in the vicinity. Don't walk in that area. Why am I asking too much? Like I said, some people will get it, some people won't, but I'm really just trying to teach because I believe that these babies, 
these beautiful babies and that mom seemed to be a very sweet young lady. I believe that they deserved an opportunity to live a long life. Those babies deserved an opportunity to grow up and become something great. And instead, they've lost their mother. They've lost one of their siblings. And those other two kids were under the bed, scared as hell. And I got to say, that's probably a real frightening thing to have to deal with. So to the family and friends, again, I hope everybody understands where I'm coming from. I'm just really giving a real opinion. I think that that mother really got a raw end of this thing. And maybe she was scared. Maybe she was trapped, whatever it is. But that dude right there, I don't see the reason why this dude needs to be living on earth anymore. Unless y'all do. I think what they need to do is lock him up, throw away the key, or find some type of experimental shuttle and launch this bastard out into space and let's see how well he could do without the atmosphere. Especially for what he did to those kids. If there's anything else to report with this particular story, we will update you guys and keep you posted. But to those kids and to that mother, I wish those other two living kids well and to the mom and to her other kid that passed away right here. Could have grown up and became anything, man. RIP to them. I'm DJ Just Jay with the AFC, and we're going to continue to keep putting the children first. If the mom wants to date a thug, the mom could have dated a thug without having kids. Then it would have only put her life in danger, which I don't think is a smart thing to do. And I'm not encouraging her to do that. But it is very unfair to put those defenseless children in that situation because they cannot speak for themselves, nor can they defend themselves when the thug lion decides to attack. 